It's January 2021. Amidst the COVID lockdown, a so-called David versus Goliath showdown erupted. It was led by 34-year-old Massachusetts dad from the basement of his rented home. His strategies were discussed on the Reddit forum Wall Street Bets, and on the New York Stock Exchange, the GameStop stock soared up 2,000%. Does this bring back any memories? It turns out the man who drove the GameStop Reddit mania was named Keith Gill, and at its peak, his original investment of $53,000 had become $48 million. But what about everyone else? By the end of the year, the stock had plummeted, and many big names and everyday investors lost thousands of dollars. These types of mania grabbed the attention of the media. However, anybody rarely stops to say, wait a minute, why did so many people take such extreme risks and lose so much of their savings because of a Reddit post? Well, that is fundamentally because of a lack of understanding of personal finance. But don't worry, I won't make you sit through a personal finance class. What I do want to do is draw your attention to the financial illiteracy around us, even in a prosperous country like the US. While volunteering at food drives, I observed how many families with low income struggled to meet their basic needs due to staggering debt. Though my interactions with them were limited, it was evident that almost all the people coming through the drives weren't aware of the basics of personal finance, which made them vulnerable to falling prey to predatory debt. My journey with personal finance began in the eighth grade when I studied economics as part of my school's curriculum. The course introduced me to the basics of personal finance. Admittedly, luck was also an important factor. I'm fortunate to have been born in a family where the discipline to manage money, understanding investment options, and regular discussions on how to categorize earnings into spendings, savings, and donating have built personal finance into my conscience. However, not everyone is lucky enough to be born in a financially aware family. And this is why financial literacy needs to be formally taught along with the other subjects in schools. The statistics for financial literacy are underwhelming. A survey published by the Council for Economic Education in 2023 identified just 16 states requiring a standalone personal finance course in high school. California is one of the largest of the 22 states where the high school curriculum does not include personal finance. And the consequences are far-reaching. 32% of teens still don't know the difference between a credit and debit card. According to the Federal Reserve's 2022 survey, 32% of Americans lack enough money to cover a $400 emergency expense. This is the first way that financial literacy is broken. We must change young teenagers' mindsets before they go out into the real world to ensure that they become financially stable, build assets, and achieve their personal goals. But you may argue, can't people just Google for information? Well, yes, there are a lot of websites and blogs with detailed content on personal finance. So the problem isn't a lack of content. Rather, it is the lack of people who take the time to learn about it. Google can provide you the answers, but learning the basics of financial literacy concepts, such as budgeting, compounding, and interest rates, gives you the ability to assess your personal situation and scenarios. Personal finance isn't interesting enough that middle schoolers or high schoolers will proactively self-study it. Even adults shy away from learning this life skill. And even after learning, the benefits of savings and investing take a very long time to accrue. In this world of instant gratification, money compounding over seven to 10 years and doubling is an eternity. Why not spend that money on the venti caramel ribbon crunch cappuccino at Starbucks? <laughs> There's neither an incentive nor a benefit to learning personal finance. And this is the second way that financial literacy is broken. So the question is, can financial literacy efforts be improved? How do we fix it so that people are more responsible with their money and hopefully not gamble it all away on the next GameStop? When someone thinks of financial literacy, 
they start to think of what is the next stock or ETF to invest in, or the difference between an IRA and a Roth IRA. What is missing is the basics of personal finance taught in a simple to understand language in a fun way. I started to create financial videos with an emphasis on simplicity. And once I gained my footing on creating simple animated videos, I decided to take that to the next stage. Where do we high schoolers spend our free time? We practically live in the digital world. This is why I created a mobile app called Finlit EDU. It's a free and secure mobile app that provides bite-sized lessons through animated videos. And at the end of each lesson, a built-in quiz ensures that you have fully understood the topic. However, my app wasn't gaining traction fast enough. How could I motivate people to take their financial education seriously? I started by delivering content through a personal finance workshop, and that motivated some students to learn in a more traditional setting. However, the level of engagement wasn't high enough. Maybe their parents forced them to attend. For subsequent workshops, I told attendees that they would receive an Amazon gift card if they completed a quiz correctly and a prize for winning a stock game. And the level of engagement went through the roof. Not only that, once they went through the lessons, they left some flattering reviews. Lesson learned. Incentives drive meaningful engagement, both for kids and adults. And as of today, my app has more than 200 downloads. And we can expand on this idea. With greater financial support, we can introduce more incentives to engage with students and communities. As an example, local stores can provide coupons as incentives to learn, potentially under their corporate social responsibility programs. Apart from sponsoring local events, stores can provide incentives to spread financial literacy. Imagine, in addition to distributing groceries to low-income families, you also give them a coupon for completing a personal finance module. You are going to see compounding benefits for the entire family. Further, local credit unions can engage the newly financially literate low-income families with financial products they previously did not have access to. Now, there's both an incentive and a benefit to learning personal finance. Mobile apps such as MyFinlit EDU could be at the center of this ecosystem. Nobody in the world has yet implemented such a program. And this type of program can re-energize financial literacy efforts. Second, I've experimented with and proved how incentives play a large role in motivation. We need to reach out to, local, to organizations working in financial literacy to adopt this new and effective approach of spreading financial literacy. It's time for a collective effort involving organizations, governments, and individuals to transform financial literacy from a neglected concern into a societal priority. Take your financial education seriously by using educational apps or seeking guidance from trusted financial advisors. By redefining the approach to financial education, we can make an impact on the global scale. Thank you. <laughs>